Have you ever thought about the importance of what grip you should have on the baseball as you're coming set and getting your signs from the catcher? If you haven't, in this video, I'm going to explain to you why you should. I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we're talking about what grip you should have as you're coming set and getting the signs from the catcher uh, and what have you. And you're probably sitting here saying, well, Andy, why would I, that's that even important? Well, I'm going to tell you why it's important. Because I think there's a lot of things that can go wrong or, or is, you know, difficult as it is already when you're up there on the mound pitching. You could have a lot of things going against you. Maybe you don't have your best stuff that day. But I th can't think of a worse thing in the world than to be up there competing your tail off and trying to give yourself and your team a chance to win. And you are tipping off and telling telegraphing to the hitter what you're getting ready to throw before you've even thrown it. And so he's already got the advantage on you before you've let go of the baseball. I can't think of a worse thing to, to deal with that. And so what we're the way we start off holding the baseball as we're getting our signs is very critical to disguising the pitch that we're going to throw. And this is what I mean. What I tell my guys is to have all the pitches that you throw and make them legitimate pitches as part of your arsenal. Don't just come up with some wacky pitch that you don't really throw. The pitches that you throw on a consistent consistent basis, which one is the most difficult one for you to get to in terms of grip? Not that it's extremely hard, but just which one's the most involved? For me, it was the circle change. That's what I threw when I threw my change up was the circle change. For some guys who throw a split, maybe it's the split finger, but whatever the pitch is, which one causes you the most movement or is the most involved with your hand for you to get to? And, and that's the pitch that you need to start out with every single time as you're getting the signs from the catcher. Start off with the most difficult pitch. And here's why. I see a lot of guys all the way from Little League, even into college some, uh, and at the high school level for sure, that all they do is they just kind of grab a four-seam fastball grip and they just put it in their glove and here we go. And now I'm get, getting my signs. Well, as soon as they go to an off-speed pitch where there's involvement more with the hand, all of a sudden you start seeing that glove moving a little bit, maybe their arm starts moving a little bit. They don't even necessarily know that they're doing it because they're so focused on other things. But what that's telling the hitter is that, you know what, I put a fastball in my glove, but I'm not throwing that now I'm throwing something so he starts gearing up for off speed and all of a sudden he doesn't necessarily know what off speed but he just knows it's going to be slower and he's going to try to get into timing with that and that puts you at a disadvantage on the other hand if you start off with something else that uh, you, you move off of, he's going to term, determine that uh, you know, you're not throwing whatever pitch he sees you going into the glove with. So the key is, is when we start off with our most difficult pitch, like I said, for me, it was the circle change. As I'm, I go into the glove, I'm in with my circle and I'm getting the signs from the catcher or I'm out of my stretch and you know, I've got the circle in my hand. As I come set, everything that I move off of from here should be easier for me to get to, which should require less movement as well. But if he calls for the change up, I'm already there and then I can just start my delivery and we can go. But it's a difference between having to find that grip and then just quickly moving it to a fastball grip or curveball or slider, whatever else it is that you throw, because everything that we move to off of our initial grip should be easier. The last piece about it is if you have a glove where you've got it where the, the finger is open like this, another little tip is to make sure that uh, the pitcher is, is consistent with his finger and what he's doing. Uh, you see a lot of guys, they don't even realize they're doing it, but as they're changing, they'll sometimes move that finger, and that's the indicator. They're still everywhere else, but they're moving that finger, and that's a little tip to the hitter that something else is changing. So make sure that you keep consistent, keep that finger down under the glove. You'll even see some of these gloves now with a little flap over the finger. It's there to disguise the pitch, okay? All right. So I hope that that was informative for you. Before you leave, make sure you sign up to my page and uh, make sure that you catch up all, of, all the other videos that I've created and, and have still yet to come. And if you haven't already, also take advantage of the free three-part video series that I've got attached to the uh, homepage on this uh, link as well. And uh, I'll catch you down the road.